What is going on YouTube? One of the extra here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We have something very special because we are Go AZ Scottsdale and we have this bad boy right here. We're going to ride it. Where then we're going to talk about it. And I really want to see the comparison between my 2019 RC4 1100 factory and this brand new 2021 RC4 1100 factory. So come along with me. So this is beautiful. The 2021 RC4 1100 factory. Those daytime running lights are freaking mean. We're going to hop on this thing, go for a ride. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. Check it out. I got more of these reviews. If you like this video, hit the like button. And then if you're not new and you don't know what I'm going to upload, because neither do I, hit that little bell and get a little notification every time I do upload. But let's go take this thing for a ride and we'll see what she's about. All right, so we got the 2021 Aprilia RS34 1100 factory. Oh boy, first impressions. The seat is just as high as the previous one. So the seat is so much more comfortable right now. It's definitely still got the same width. It's also got the same height. So if you are a shorter rider, you're going to be in your tippy toes. Now what I will say is a lot better and I can go over this more in depth once we get off the bike. The rear sets don't feel nearly as high as they used to on the, like the 2019 model. It's rather warm outside right now and the motor is not getting nearly as hot. I like to change modes here. Um, sport's fine and all, but I feel like it's got too much of a lull to it. So while you're going through these modes, you hit this little button down here. It used to be the starter and that sucked. But you can change your user, say you want to set up to be a little more fun on the streets. This is kind of what you want to use. Or you want to set it to street, because I was in sport a second ago. I do believe the street kind of tans it down a little bit more than the sport does. But man, I'll tell you what, the throttle is so incredibly smooth and it was like that before. I love the way the dash looks right now. It's so good looking. The brakes solid solid they're good i'm liking this it feels a little less harsh forward i just changed it into track one mode from street to sport the throttle doesn't feel a huge difference between the two i think in first gear there's a little bit of a lull so it's it's more usable in the street i mean it's the whole purpose of it but now we're in track one mode which is more aggressive the ABS is only on the front and you see there that the dash shows a lot of time not so much the miles per hour I mean it's got it underneath a lot of times it's not as pronounced but what I want to feel is that throttle response because it is fantastic in the lower modes the throttle response was a lot more smooth wasn't quite as abrupt I've heard people say this is twitchy in this mode so I want to see what it felt like so far, I'm not really quite seeing the twitchiness. The quick shifter, my God. Aprilia makes like the best quick shifters. They just do. Yeah, so the pickup was amazing right there. Uh, I was saying a few things because I was feeling the front end get a little light and I could feel everything just kind of ta tamed down a little bit. It was quite nice. The electronics that are on this bike don't seem quite as intrusive. They seem a little more forgiving. Granted, I haven't done anything crazy, but hey, you can feel what you feel. I love the brake feel. It's such a solid, solid, solid squeeze. <laughs> it's such a nice squeeze. You know, there's just enough pressure one or two fingers and you can slowly build it i love that it's still really hot outside and the actual temperature on here is showing that it's also really hot the bike is but as far as this sitting on it, it i don't feel like i'm cooking so that's wow could do that again if i tried well that's mildly embarrassing Quick shifter is phenomenal. <laughs> so this has been a little bit of a hectic ride. Um, I'm trying to follow directions and I don't know where I'm at. On top of that, uh, we had to get gas. But I tell you what, I got a good feel for it. Let's get back and let's talk about all of the really, really, really cool points and the really good features, especially this dash. We're gonna go through this dash 
I got to with the technology. Got to show you guys. So let's start off this beautiful 2021 Aprilia R3-4 1100 factory. As you can tell, hair is all wet. It is super warm out here, so recording this is going to be fun, but what a machine. I wanted to see how it felt in comparison to my 2019, and I tell you what, a lot of the great characteristics that 2019 had, this has, and then there's some refinement that actually makes this feel even better than what the 2019 did. So let's get into that a little bit. You start with the motor. The 2019 had a 1,077 cc motor. It still put out 217 horsepower, about 90 foot pounds of torque, 92 foot pounds of torque. Now this one is a 1,099 cc, so it's closer to the true 1100, but it still puts out the same power, 217 horsepower, 92 pound feet of torque. So it's very similar as far as the older one, but the way it's delivered feels much, much more refined. I will say though that in street and sport mode, when you get on the gas in first gear, it's a very, very gradual, easy pickup. I kind of like to be a little bit more peppy, but once I put it in track mode, all that came out. It's one of those more smooth power delivery of a thousand CC and above bikes that I've ever ridden. And I love the throttle itself because there's not a lot of play to it. It's very tight, it's very smooth, and it's just a great, great feel. Just to show how hot it is, we had to come inside because the camera couldn't handle the heat and kept shutting off on me. So now we're gonna do the rest of the review inside. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell up there to get notifications on when I upload because I try to do it every week, but you know, life happens and sometimes I'm a little late, but hey. Now the riding position, it's still that aggressive super bike style, but it's actually a little more forgiving. The seat is very comfortable and they said that they added 10 millimeters of range to your rear sets here. So you actually have more leg room because before your feet definitely felt really high, but I tell you what, it's got a much, much better feel. I don't feel like my elbows are touching my knees anymore. And I love that little tweak. I mean, it's 10 millimeters. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it really made a huge difference. Now, as I had mentioned while I was riding it, this is actually a rather comfortable machine and the seat is the large part of that. You know, the seat that they use now for the 2021 models, I noticed in the RS660 was super plush and I'm rather surprised to see that the RSV4 1100 factory is just as plush. It's beautiful. You got tons of real estate forward and backwards and side to side. It's got just enough grip. So a stock seat, very impressive. The other thing I want to point out again is these guys, they have grip. On top of that, they're 10 millimeters lower, as I mentioned, and it really creates a very nice place for you to sit. All right, so that's the that's a seating position in the motor itself. Let's get into the real nitty gritty stuff, the stuff that I enjoy, that I love giving to you guys. That's the technology. And this new RS4 1100 factory has so much in it. Now, there are six different riding modes. You have sport, street, and then you have a user one. Now the user one, you can obviously tailor your track control, your wheelie control, your ABS, and change all those settings. Next you have race, track one, and then track two, and those go even deeper into the performance of this beautiful RS4 1100 factory. I want you to listen to something. As we change modes, listen to this. See if I can hear it. That is your suspension changing every time you change from race to track one to track two. <laughs> you hear those little audible changes, kind of cool. Now controlling all of this wonderful electronics is a Bosch six axis IMU. And those little changes you hear in the suspension is the Olin's 2.0 EC system that they have. It's much more advanced. It's got a semi-active suspension and that suspension can actually be changed in two different settings. So once you change it to your semi-active, you can actually adjust it even further. And if you do manually, you can also adjust that. So as you turn the key on, we have this beautiful Aprilia display. It's brand new, be a racer. It shows you your miles per hour, your beautiful tack. You can kind of go through it. Now what's interesting now is you used to have to hold the start stop switch right here to actually change the mode you're in. And I love that they added this little thumb button down here. If you press and hold it, that's how you can change your user setup because you have your engine mapping, engine braking, your track control, your wheelie control, launch control. You have three modes for your engine management. Your engine braking, also three different levels between that. Your track control gets kicked up to eight different levels of track control, which is awesome. Your wheelie control also has three different levels of intervention to them. Your launch control, there's three levels to that. And your ABS, there are three levels to that. And 
you know, you can turn it completely off or you put it to three, which is your most intrusive set for ABS. You can do all those changes to your user profile. Now your street and sport, they're set. They're what they're gonna be. Now navigate the bike's menus. You have to push the right little arrow, hold it down and it'll come up and you'll see this menu that says vehicle. Go over to the vehicle and that's how you change your modes and what you want to tailor them to. And you can see you can change your shift light, your quick shifter up and down, you can turn on or off. Left hand switch, you can set the cruise. Really control, you can see what's on there. Engine braking, you can turn on or off. Headlamp, turn manual, automatic, emergency. So if you're riding, you can decide if you want to change it from running lights, high beams, whatnot. Automatic obviously does it, whether it's sunny or dark out. And emergency is pretty sweet because it still gives you lighting just in case like you break down and run out of gas. Now we go into the Aprilia suspension control. You have six levels for your suspension control settings. Like if you're at the track and you have slicks on, you can change that setup based on the feel of the track, especially with having slicks on your bike. Then you have active track. That's usually if you're riding on your normal street tires, like you have here, the Diablo Super Course SPs. They're gonna be great tires for the track and you can set the suspension for these. Active road, again, same thing. You can dial it into whatever tarmac you're riding on. Now those active modes, you can set it and because it's semi-active suspension, once you set it to that, the computer's gonna calibrate to your settings. Now, if you don't want the computer to do anything, there's a manual track slick mode. Again, slick tires. You set it completely the way you want. The computer does nothing. It stays the way you want it. And it does that again for the track and for the road. As you go through display, there's actually 10 different settings for backlight, whether you want it super bright or you want to dim it down a little bit, or you can just put it to auto and it'll change for you, whether it's day or night. Now, actually, to adjust the track control, you have these two little buttons down here, this plus or minus, right on the thumb switch on the left-hand side. To change wheelie control, you have three settings again. That's this guy on the left hand, and you can just flick it up and down. It can do all those changes on the fly. It's awesome. Something else that the RSV4 1100 factory has is cruise control. <laughs> I love bikes that have cruise control. It's a feature you never thought you'd want until you go on a long cruise with your buddies, until you get to the actual ripping spot, and you can go have fun, turn the cruise control off. And again, that's adjusted by a little thumbstick over here. Now with any machine, I look at the brakes and these have our Brembo Stylema calipers and they stop. They have a very strong feel initially and then they progressively go. So these are the type of brakes that when you touch them, they will definitely lurch, but because they aren't insanely bitey, they grab them and then they just have such a beautiful feel. And you know, I only rode around town and noticed it there. I can't wait to see what this thing feels like on track. Hopefully I get the chance. But if it's anything like the 2019, once you grab that brake and you start to squeeze, you feel what the front end is doing. And I tell you what, the revamped styling and the arrow on it, it makes the front end feel even more compliant than it did previously. Now when I look at the front of the RSV4 1100 factory, it had the same styling that the RS660 did. And to me, it fit the RS660 perfectly because it was sort of that middle of the road bike that wasn't super hardcore and super mean. So when I put it, when they put it on this, I thought it didn't look quite right. I thought it made the front end look soft, a little weak. But I tell you what, in person, <laughs> I think this actually looks pretty mean. I love the daytime running lights right here. They are super cool looking, but more importantly, Let's talk about the elephant in the room right here. Dumbo ears. I call him mustachio, the, you know, like Wario, the giant mustache. Well, this is, this is his mustache right here. <laughs> but these winglets are insane. They're huge. And at first I thought they were a little ridiculous and honestly they are, especially at speed, these are gonna do their job very well. What can I say about this beautiful 2021 RSV4 1100 factory that I didn't already go over? It's an amazing bike. It's got that still Italian feel, but it's more refined. It's like being equated to what the BMW S1000RR is as far as the refinement, the smoothness, the character of the motor is very predictable. And for an 1100cc track focused monster, you can ride on the street. It's got that daily rider ability and <laughs> I dig it. I think it is a step up from the 2019 model. Even though this one has electronic suspension and my 2019 had the manual suspension, it adjusted beautifully. It was super smooth. It went over a few bumps out there and it soaked them up just fine. I can't thank them enough for allowing me to take it out. Brian, Ryan, thank you so much for setting this up. If you have any questions, contact Brian Ryan. These guys are great. I've never had a bad experience here at GoAZ. <laughs>
there on top of the Ducati side, I just noticed it's a freaking Lego. It just threw me off. Check me out on Instagram, C underscore one only XRAM. I put tons of pictures from bikes like this to the cars that I review, my dogs, every once in a while on my face, but not, not too many times. We don't need not much of that. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out. Unlike the CBR1000RR, this doesn't have a fun valve flapper to change. So it's always fun. Whereas the CBR, you had to get to a certain point for that valve to open to have fun. No fun valve flapper.